All right. What's up? Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Good. How are you? Good, good. Uh, my name's Ben. It's very nice to meet you. Thanks, Thanks for joining us today. And yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, so we have quite a few things to talk about, but um, just for starters, I, I do want to give a shout to your new series. Um, su such uh, a, a fan of it thus far. I'm excited to see what happens next. But uh, it looks like you're having a lot of fun as well. So to tell us a bit about how you came into the fold for it and what made you want to play this character, Chad. Um, I mean, I, I was in Mexico. I got the um, uh, the script and it was doing the self-tape for it uh, down in Mexico when I was down there. And I did it outside at a pool at a resort because I was like, I have to take advantage of being at the resort yeah. while I'm here in Mexico and do the self-tape there. Um, but the character, the script, everything was, it was such uh, a fun story. So it had so much heart and personality. Um, I was immediately like, I, I have to get this. And so um, the audition process and then, you know, shooting down Port of Orange for three months, but it was, uh, it's, it's so, it's so much fun. So it was, it was just such a blast. Yeah, absolutely. And and I feel like Austin Winsberg, he's one of the co-creators on it. He's also known for his always extraordinary playlist. There is kind of a brightness, a musicality, a, a nostalgic factor at play here. So what what about that tone and kind of that that heightened reality was appealing to you? Um, yeah, I mean, the story is great. And it's kind of, uh, I mean, with Eugenio and... Uh, People, the writers are such great storytellers. It, it definitely had this flair to it, this 1980s flash and uh, just the colors. The The world is so much more uh, vibrant and exciting just being set back in 84. And, uh, I, you know, as, a, as somebody who didn't get to grow up much in the 80s, I was born in 89, <laughs> uh, being able to work in film and that with like, the hair, or the makeup, the the cars, the clothes, it's just such a really cool, like, way to tra travel back in time. But it's just, it was just a real cool uh, way to do something and tell a story because, you know, back then, it, everything was just completely different. You didn't have, everybody didn't have a camera on their phone, you know, things were a little bit more wild, a little bit more crazy. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, well, you mentioned that uh, you sent in a self tape for this role. Um, I imagine that that's kind of the name of the game these days, especially these last 18 months. Everyone is sending in self-tapes rather than auditioning in person. Um, how do you go about leaving an impression in that space? Do you have any self-tape tips that you can share with the backstage audience today? Um, yeah, do something, try to do something different. Do something that's, you know, they're probably going to be seeing 100, 200, 300. I mean, who knows how many self-tapes, but if they're, you know, if they're getting, if they're all always just getting self tapes, everybody's going to probably be doing similar things. Um, and so find a way that you can be different, make choices. Um, I mean, I was in Mexico, so I was fortunate to where I was like, I had a pool at my uh, disposal and uh, I drove up in one of the scenes on a golf cart, uh, you know, and just like playing around and just, just having fun with it. But, yeah. you know, finding different ways to set yourself apart from the other 150 people going for your role. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, j just looking to the last few years, um, I, I did touch on it before, but you're obviously, uh, your on-screen breakout was on Glee, and over the last few years, you've really been zeroing in on music. Um, wh what has that balance like been for you creatively between your artistic pursuits of music and acting? Did, did you have a priority at one point? How did you end up zeroing back in on TV? Just walk us through your mindset for the last few years and what you've been up to. Um, so uh, pretty, pretty much like I would say like after I uh, finished shooting Glee, it was it was pretty intense. It was like 10 months a year of, you know, 16, 17 hour days and that five days a week and, you know, dance rehearsals, tours, pre-records, you know, filming an hour long episode it's, it's it's a lot of work so it was pretty much like boot camp uh and so after we finished that i was like if i'm ever going to make a record if i'm ever going to really dive into music i've got to go full on and i've got to do it now because i mean the last thing i wanted to do was coming off of that show was jump into another show mm -hmm. um so i went and did a lot of music and went uh did a lot of writing got the got to do a lot of me time and spend time with uh, myself and in the studio and kind of figuring out what I wanted 
my music to sound like, you know, what, what was the story I wanted to tell. Um, and really dove into that world for the last five, five or so years. Um, and then kind of got the itch to where I was like, I really want to get back at it because I really miss that. You, the, there's this feeling you get when you're, you know, when you get to disappear into a character and you, there's a switch that flips and you get to kind of go on and like do the performance side of the things. And it was, uh, it was something that I just, I, I was kind of craving after, after taking a break and going just in the music. So I started kind of going back into the auditioning, the, uh, process and uh i got this project and i was like i i gotta i gotta jump all over this this is the one yeah there you go yeah. there you go right. and, and, and do, do you have an album on the way next year did, did i have um, that right yeah so i've been putting out like singles this year kind of once a month uh, i did an ep while i was shooting in mexico hmm. uh which is called stone man so it's out if anybody wants to go check it out um and then after that just putting out a song a month and then uh, in 2022, probably around Christmas, I'm going to actually go in to start recording the the full length record and putting uh, try to get something out by before the spring of 2022, like a full length full length record. So, all right, exciting stuff, exciting yeah. stuff. Um, now, lo looking back at your early days, I know that you come from a, a family of artists. Is that right? Like a, 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 your your folks are involved in the arts, or you grew up uh, in the arts. Yeah, my dad is a uh, country music songwriter. My brother does music uh, as a producer. He's in a band. Uh, my older sister is a songwriter. Uh, my youngest sister is an incredible singer uh, and, and can write as well. So it's like everybody kind of, it's a little bit of the Partridge family. Everybody kind of is involved with music in one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I grew up with my dad being a songwriter. So, you know, they've been throwing guitars in our hands or, you know, learning how to play drums or whatever since we were like probably four or five years old. So it kind of just seemed like that was what, and that's what dad did. So that's kind of, uh, it seemed like a normal job. Yeah, yeah. It's in your blood at this point, for sure. Yeah. Um, do, do, do you hope to find another project that allows you to perform as an actor on screen, but also work in your, your musical skill set as well? So, something like Glee or something, another musical adjacent project like that? Yeah, I've um, I've actually been uh, working on creating something for that that kind of straddles both of those lines, but more about um, where I come from. So, mm -hmm. uh, I would say that's you know getting that up up and off the ground in the next couple of years is uh, would be really cool if I you know if I could figure that out. Nice, nice. Is, would this be your first time sitting in that creator's chair, kind kind of making your own? product like that uh yes yes and no. i mean like i've obviously like i've goofed around and done done stuff here and there that, are, that i've never put out that's just like a little bit like more goof on the goofy side of things that have like music and like fun videos and stuff uh kind of more so in the lonely island world uh yeah sure <laughs> uh but uh this would be like the first like kind of developing a uh a drama slash comedy with that has uh, music involved yeah, yeah. Well, we definitely have the experience behind you to, to lead you in the way to that. Um, you do mention that your experience on Glee was kind of like a boot camp, um, especially because that came so early in your career and yeah. then looking at what you've done in the years since. Um, how do you think those years on Glee prepared you for what you're doing today? What, what do you remember most in terms of like learning experiences from that time? Um, I'd say it was kind of like a college education. It was pretty much like getting thrown into a machine uh, like a well-oiled machine that's working. So it's like you have to catch up and you have to learn really quick to uh, to to just, you know, keep up, I guess. It, it was one of those things to where you're also working with people that have been doing this, like as far as musical theater, you know, in the performing arts world that have been doing it at the, the top of their game for mm. uh, years and years and years. So it's like you learn a lot. You learn it really quick. You just have to kind of pay attention. But it was it was essentially like performing arts school college you know my, I was obviously into a little bit of the different side of things or it's more like uh I wasn't a big musical theater geek I was more like the singer songwriter 70s music and like mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. James Taylor and uh you know like the Laurel Canyon type 
type music like the Eagles and whatnot. But uh, definitely getting thrown up on a stage and having to do choreography and dancing and stuff and never having done it. It's like, oh shit, it's this, it's, 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 it got real, real quick. Yeah, yeah, baptism by fire a little bit. For yeah, sure. exactly. <laughs> um, well, to, to for, for all our early career folks out there tuning in right now, um, just as a final question for you, what what is that kind of one piece of advice that would have been super helpful for you back in the day when you were first getting your feet in the arts, the performing arts, whether it be music or acting? Um, what's something that you've taken away that, that you'd like to share with us today? Uh, one thing that I wish like I, I mean, I don't want to say wish I'd known, but wish I'd done more was fail earlier on. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Get it out of the way. I mean, it's kind of inevitable with, um, with the entertainment world. It's like, you're all, you, you, everybody's going to fail at something at some point. Um, and I learned more from that than I had from doing the right thing, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of probably would have liked to, uh, be less hesitant early on and you know the stage fright of everything and then just like once you just rip the band-aid off and start going it starts becoming more natural and easy um, and probably just overall like spend more time I would say spend more time studying uh, beforehand so when, when you do get some of those opportunities you're able to go in there and like whether it be whether it would be you know character work or dancing or something to where it's to where it's like you really don't feel like you're having to catch up mm, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh yeah i mean i don't know i i think it's i think you always look back on uh on you know history and I'm like well i could have done this better i could have done this better because where you are now but uh yeah i don't know yeah, yeah, fair enough fair enough um well that, that's all i have for you today thank you cord for sharing your time with us and uh, congrats on this new series. I'm excited to see what 22 has in store and uh, beyond that. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. You have a good one. Bye-bye.